I do want to state it's a little refreshing to know that um, the Canadian government is also kind of dumb. Because <laughs> the American government Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to know that it's not just us. And then again, if you want to know how bad it gets, just talk to Michael Corbick or Michael Spavor what it's like spending three years in a Chinese prison where the lights were on 24 hours a day and they had basically, you know, bread and water kind of thing. There was no access to their lawyers, no access to Canadian embassy personnel. That's not what it's like when China picks you up. Bill, I need to know, are there any conspiracy theories you do believe in? No. Oh. Okay. No. <laughs> well, because to him, it's not a conspiracy theory then. Because <laughs> he knows. Okay, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Agaton's taking notes here. Yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm going to grab a piece of paper. We're going to take care of this right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I've been notified and audio is low, so I will. Uh, thank you, Tentacle, so much for telling us. I will put this uh, away. Phil, your audio is a bit lower than everybody else, so if you could put okay. it up on your hand, that would be uh, excellent. Uh, that being said, guys, we'll jump in the discussion in uh, one minute. Before we go, just a bit of house cleaning. Tonight, guys, if you have any questions you want to ask our guests, make sure to uh, highlight your question in the chat. Uh, I will be uh, getting all the questions, and if we have time at the end, we will uh, have uh, all these questions answered by our guests. Uh, that being said, we have prepared ourselves a lot of questions. We want to know what's happening, why Canada decided to ban uh, Huawei from, uh, and also Z Z Z Z -E, ZTE. There's another company that, because uh, I, I did my research this afternoon. <laughs> I did I did a, a stream, a, an hour and a half stream. Uh, Zeke was there with me in the chat, asking me questions, helping me with that. So we prepared a few questions on our own as well. So that being said, uh, let's just jump into it, guys. If you want to have your question being read out loud by the voice, make sure you tip over two dollars or two hundred bitties, and your question would be uh, read in text to speech uh, over us. So that's a nice thing you can do. Uh, that being said, Phil, why the fuck <laughs> is uh, Huawei banned in Canada? Oh, where do we start? So, I, I, you know, it's really important to start off with a couple of things about Huawei and what it is and what the Chinese claim it is. So Huawei, of course, is a major telecommunications company. It's been around for quite some time. Huawei product is available all over the world. They're one of the big ones like Ericsson uh, out, of, out of Sweden um, that, you know, provide, you know, 5G telecommunications equipment. They're a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, as I said, they're they're ubiquitous. Lots of countries use their infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, is that they're a Chinese company, and the Chinese will tell you that they are a private corporation that acts independently of the of the government of China, which is complete and utter bullshit. Because nothing operates independently of the Chinese government within China. So even though they we they go they hide behind this veneer that Huawei is somehow you know a typical capitalist corporation. Um, no, they, they report to the Chinese government and the Chinese government controls everything that happens in China and by the Chinese. We'll get a lot more into that down the road. So when, when Huawei decided it wanted to, you know, basically run Canada's uh, 5G network, um, originally the Canadian government thought this was a really good idea. Now, I'm going to assume and I don't know this for a fact, I'm going to assume that somebody looked at the technology and said, yeah, the technology is good. It's the, it's the equal of Ericsson or Nokia is the other firm I was thinking of, the Finnish firm Nokia. You know, it, it works. Um, it'll be good for Canada as we get to the 5G, faster speeds, more data, et cetera, et cetera. What can possibly go wrong with having a Chinese company uh, operate our telecommunications network? It's, it's a win-win situation, right? The Chinese win because they get money. Canadians win because um, I don't know how many of our listeners are Canadian, but we got a real shitty telecommunications network, generally speaking, one of the highest in the world. In terms of our cell phone, yeah. cell phone costs, yeah. Oh, the it's cost, yeah, the cost yeah. is atrocious. Yeah, it's that's not, a... it's, it's not good. Uh, you know, being being such a big country that's sparsely populated, I know, for, you know, I had I internet at my cottage and it was it was the shits. It was slow. It would it'd crap out all the time because I'm basically on satellite internet and it was lousy. So this was seen as something that would be good for Canada. Um, but the problem is, and you know, I'm not going to say that the Chinese saw this as an opportunity to use their network to spy on Canada you know, and to influence Canadian politics. But bottom line is, as I said in my earlier remarks, Huawei is a Chinese company which reports to the Chinese government, ergo that the Chinese government decided they wanted to use Huawei to gain an advantage, they would do exactly that. Now, the problem with other problems with Huawei that people may remember is a couple of years ago, uh, at the behest of the Trump administration and our great neighbors to the south of the 49th parallel, uh, Canada arrested the CFO of Huawei, Meng Wanzhou, in Vancouver, on charges of what was it fraud or something i forget what the actual charges were it doesn't matter yeah i've looked into it this afternoon it was something uh, related to to fraud or yeah. uh it was related to a hsbc and yeah. uh that's something i don't understand and i still don't understand to this day the uh the americans wanted her arrested why yeah. did we do it because she was in vancouver 
So essentially, because we have such a close relationship, um, both from an intelligence and a law enforcement perspective between our two countries, it's one of the strongest in the world. They basically would have sent a message saying, gee, guess what? Meng Wanzhou is getting off a plane in Vancouver and she has a place in Vancouver, I believe, and we want you to arrest her. So obviously, uh, Meng Wanzhou must have known that the Americans wanted her. So she's sure as shit's not going to get on a plane to L.A. or New York or Atlanta. So they couldn't arrest her. So they asked us to do it for them pending extradition. Now, um, again, I didn't work in law enforcement, but I, but I do know that extradition is a pretty tricky card to play. So just because you arrest someone doesn't mean you can put them on another plane the next day and send them back to whomever wants to try them and you know arrest them and put them on trial. Um, people who are being arrested have rights, and one of the rights is to have their cases heard where they're arrested, as opposed to the country that wants to try them. That's why the extradition took so long. Anywho, um, in the immediate aftermath of Meng Wanzhou being picked up by the, by the RCMP, the Chinese government arrested uh, two Canadians, both called Michaels, and they're now known as the Two Michaels. And I have a, a book. I, I, in fact, I interviewed the author of, of the book on the Two Michaels a couple months ago. And I remember but, I edited a lot of YouTube videos from yeah. you on your YouTube channel talking about Two Michaels. By the yeah. way, Phil has a great YouTube channel. It's called Canadian Intelligence A. And if you guys want to go and uh, watch more of Phil after that, <laughs> this is where you go. Thank you, sir. So Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig were both arrested by China. They were held in horrendous conditions, whereas Meng Wanzhou was under house arrest in her nine gazillion dollar apartment in Vancouver. And uh, so eventually um, what happened was Canada, uh, years later, decided to release Meng Wanzhou. And guess what happened? The Chinese who had arrested Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig on espionage charges, i.e. they accused them of spying on the on China, for Canada or who, for whomever else, got released and the charges were dropped. Go figure. No relationship <laughs> between. The, so in other words, there was no relationship between the arrest of Meng Wanzhou and the arrest of the two Michaels as court in China. But it was a, by pure coincidence, they were let go the day she was let go. Anyhow, so that obviously, I think, um, tainted Canada's view of Huawei, because if we saw what China can do and does do in situations where other countries pisses it off. So last thing I'll say very quickly is that so. You know, Canada is part of what's called the Five Eyes Intelligence Network. This is a post-World War II sharing arrangement between the five great Anglo powers, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. It is the most powerful intelligence sharing relationship in the history of the universe. Um, having worked, um, as I said, in both SIGINT and HUMAN for more than 30 years, I am a testimony to how much intelligence is shared, very sensitive intelligence. It turns out the other Five Eyes partners um, banned Huawei quite some time ago. And yet the Trudeau government, i.e. the prime minister, really dithered on whether to do this for Canada. And it's only recently they made this decision. So the question a lot of us are asking is that, what did the other four eyes, i.e. the Australians, the Kiwis, the Brits, and the Americans know that we don't know? What did they say Huawei? that we don't? Yeah, exactly. And why is it that Canada is, is taking so long to make a decision that, that its partners already have? Now, this, this had potential real, real damage for Canada, because if the other partners felt that Canada's infrastructure could have been compromised by letting Huawei take it over, they could have cut us off from certain forms of intelligence for fear the Chinese might get a hold of it. That, that was the that worst case scenario. That's something I discovered today. I knew that the UK and Australia banned Huawei a, a, a long time ago. I discovered today that USA did under Trump, and I didn't know that. I wanted to know, uh, Agaton and Ash, did you know that before? I, I assume you did a bit of research. Did you know that Huawei was banned in your country for, for a long time now? Oh, you muted, uh, Ash. Okay, I I, Welcome back. I muted both. Thank you. I mu I muted both because uh, yeah, and I didn't know if one worked and the other one didn't because my thing keeps popping up like I'm speaking and I'm not. So technology, right? <laughs> Anywho, um, so I keep up with the news mainly from one person on YouTube called uh, named Philip DeFranco. Yeah. Um, so he does just worldly news. So if he or if like somehow I found if it was like a bigger thing back then, probably did I take note? No. <laughs> so I did. I although I did read about um, Trump uh, starting the ban 
here back in 2019 and then the administration talking to Canada saying, hey, do this, and then Canada taking its sweet time. So I, I did read that today. So it's been banned in your country and uh, for a bit of time now, and you did, it didn't have any impact on your daily life, and you didn't even know about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't seem to be a huge deal. What about you, Agatha? Um, I knew about it. I remember when it when it happened, um, and there was all these mixed feelings from both Democrats and Republicans. Because no matter who's in power, the other power always talks shit about the decision yeah. for the other party. So certain Democrats were talking shit about the deal. Um, but I remember a lot of support for it regardless. And I remember thinking, going, yeah, I mean, kick some of some of the shit out of here. Um, I don't really I don't really know how much it's affected my life because I I think there's still a lot of other things out there that people that China's probably getting a shit ton of information from without even people realizing it. And the number one I know about is TikTok. So, mm -hmm. um, did I notice a difference? No, because we're we're still fucked. We're, <laughs> they're still getting all of our information. Um, there's other things that you know doesn't help. I would also uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If anyone knows, but I read that. Um, Trump passing this was one of the only things that he actually got bipartisan support on. Really? So I thought that was really I I had read that when I was uh looking all of this up. Again, I'm not saying it's fact. I you can read whatever on the internet and it supports whatever you would say. So, but well, I, I, if true, I'm not surprised. And I and I agree that you know, um look, this is what happens in western democracies is parties out of power talk shit about parties in power. And then when the parties in power go out of power, they talk shit about the parties that get, get go in power. And that's just the way democracies work. Truth. But I wouldn't be surprised if this did have bipartisan support because it was so bloody obvious. And this really was, a, you know, this should, should have been the easiest decision for any government to make. There's so many different providers out there in terms of the infrastructure for 5G. Why would anyone knowing what we know about the People's Republic of China, what they do both internally and externally, what they represent, why would anybody want to entrust such a major part of their of their infrastructure, the internet, cell phone, you name it kind of thing, to a country it, that I have been saying for years is not our friend? You know, I mean, why wouldn't you go with the Swedes and the Finns? I mean, if you, if you've probably seen the last couple of weeks because of, you know, that asshole Putin in Ukraine, Finland and Sweden want to join NATO. And these are two countries that have remained neutral since the end of the Second World War. I mean, you know, so Finland and Sweden are friends of the West. They're friends of the Five Eyes. They're friends of democracies. Why in heaven's name would you go with a Chinese firm to produce something when you've got countries that basically function the same way that you do, who could provide equally an equally good product? It, it is, again, it's, this, this should not have been a difficult decision for the Trudeau government to make. What makes it worse? Uh, what about either either this company or its link with the CCP makes it worse than other? Because uh, we have a lot of companies that collects many a lot of data on us. Yeah. Like, say Facebook, uh, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, most of them, uh, the big the difference is that they're not Chinese based. Uh, why is it worse that this one is banned and not other? Was it? Uh I would say you're right. We're, you know, there, there's data that's collected on us all the time, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. Or, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The difference is, is that, Which? well, exactly. You know, I mean, you, you can't get around it, right? You, 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 you choose don't, don't accept when it comes to bookmarks and stuff and following, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're, we're open books as far as the, you know the internet's concerned. The difference is again that. You know, if Facebook collects information on you, it's basically for commercial purposes. They want to sell you things. They want to target you with ads, et cetera. It's all about money. The Chinese government is different. It is a communist state that does not have our interests in mind. Uh, they are an aggressive communist state. Just look at their what they're doing in, in the in the uh, in, in um, the South Asian Sea in terms of building military bases. They're very aggressive internationally and in trying to get people to buy into their system. And I mean, I don't want to sound like an old Cold War, although my my 
career did start during the Cold War. I remember the Soviet Union and its allies was the biggest problem, and you know, from the end of the war until the late 19, 1990s. The bottom line is that this is a country um, whose basic premise, basic existence, is inimical to our interests. That's why it's different than than Facebook and Twitter and everything else having data on you, because they're going to use it to undermine our systems as Western democracies. And I, I, I know that for a fact, because my, my former employer, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, has been warning for 25 years to various Canadian governments of different political strikes, not just cons- not liberals, conservatives, and everything in between, that China is doing that to undermine Canadian democracy. So why in heaven's name would we allow a company to have access to that information? I have a question. Go ahead. Cause... So I was in in the reading I was doing, and I I pulled it back up here just so I can have that reference. Um, it said that Hawaii is I don't even know how to pronounce well, it. So. Huawei, 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 Huawei uh, is one of the largest. Was what uh, it, back in like 2019 the start? It was like one of the most largest uh, communication companies, and it was predicted to become. Uh, the world's largest smartphone manufacturer by the end of the year, stealing the crown from Samsung, which is interesting to me because as an American, when I think of cell phone like manufacturing companies, I think of Samsung and Apple, and like I didn't even know about this company until probably. I mean, now I'm really getting into it, but if I heard about it, I'd be like, I don't even know that like that company exists. Is probably why it didn't like stick into my information back when the U.S. was uh, banning it. So I, I, I want to know if there's a reason why most people, at least I don't know if you guys, um, Agathon, I don't know if you know anything about that company before the talks. I, I like, know they sold cell the phones, like, cell phones for super cheap. I remember that. I was like, shit, I can get a phone like this for cheap? But then I was like, ah, oh, it's just a cheap Chinese knockoff. And guess what? Not wrong. And mm-hmm. they'd be stealing stuff. Um, but no, I'd, I'd heard of the company, but I, have, I don't have any experience with them. I'd I'm just interested Samsung in how guy. they got to be so, like, big. But I I mean, maybe this is just my American, er, like, um, like arrogant American self being like, <laughs> I haven't heard about it. It's not important, but... <laughs> Well, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think most people really paid attention, right? Like, uh, like, like you said, if it's a cheap knockoff, you know, I just, I just renewed my phone. I, I got a new phone a couple months ago, and I went with another Samsung because I like Samsung. But yeah, I mean, if if I was if I was a starving student and I could get a Huawei phone for one tenth the price, you think I would go for sure to go for it? But chances are, it's a piece of shit. Just ask the Russians about their Chinese tires for their vehicles in Ukraine right now, that are basically, you know, uh, bursting. So Russia got a lot of its, its military stuff from China, and it's all, all a piece of shit, which is one of the reasons, and aside from the Russian soldiers are shit, but that's one of the reasons why they're not doing so well in Ukraine, right? So why would you buy a Huawei phone knowing that it's basically an inferior product? Look, at, again, I, I'm going to play the age card here. When I was growing up, okay, in the 60s and 70s, if something said made in China, you all knew it was a piece of shit. It was cheap. Now, they've gotten better, and they certainly are, there are products that, that you know, are at least adequate but you really have to wonder, you know, in terms of the top end telecommunication stuff, is this stuff really top end or does it go back to the early, earlier, at least reputation that China had for not producing the best stuff? And be, again, they can sell it for a loss because they're state controlled. Yeah. Right. There's no need to make a profit. OK, is is Huawei state controlled or is it uh, just everything to... state controlled in, in China? This is the, this is the line that people don't understand no. is that. Okay, technically they could be an independent corporation, but the way that Chinese law reads, it, my understanding, again, I'm not a China specialist, is that China can put, you know, bring, come down hard on Huawei, say, we want you to do X, Y, or Z, or X, Y, or Z for my American friends. Um, and they have to do it. That's just the nature of the beast. I mean, you talk, this is not a democracy. This isn't like, you know, in our countries where, let's say the Canadian government, the American government said, you know, I want, oh, I don't know, um, Orville Redenbach pop, popcorn to be a certain way. Orville just says, well, fuck you. I don't, I'll make my own popcorn the way I want. But in China, you don't have that. You don't have that luxury because that's not the way the government works in China. And that's the concern is that they could use Huawei to whatever purposes they want to further their agenda and not sort of a corporate agenda. 
that's that's what we that's why we worried about it from day one, and that's why we should have banned it from day one. Uh, Agaton, do you have any question? I have a question I wanted to go, uh, but I I let you go first if you have anything you want to ask at this point. I'm I'm like just taking all of this information <laughs> in, and I'm just like this is interesting and terrifying all at the same time. Um, <sighs> Do you do you think there's going to be any backlash to this? Like, well, what are they going to do? Kidnap more Canadians? <laughs> I, I'll tell you though, if I were a Canadian living in China right now, I'd be getting my ass on the next plane out of China for all kinds of reasons. Um, you know, who knows what they're, you know, it's just like Putin threatening Finland and Sweden, right? Because they want to join NATO. Um, you never know how far they're going to go. And, and I think that if you're in China right now especially if you're in a, maybe a sensitive sector, um, you might want to think about leaving. I'm not saying they're going to do anything, but and then again, if you want to know how bad it gets, just talk to Michael Korvig or Michael Spavor, what it's like spending three years in a Chinese prison where the lights were on 24 hours a day and they had basically you know bread and water kind of thing. There was no access to their lawyers, no access to Canadian embassy personnel. That's not what it's like when China picks you up. Uh Elish here says something that goes with what you said today about the quality of phone. Uh, Elish says ZTEs are cheap. ZTE is the other company that was banned, yeah. uh, as well as Huawei. They uh, they operated at uh, and quality are cheap. And obviously, I would never say anything good about them. So, surprise, yeah, surprise, right? Yeah. Th there's a discussion right now in the chat going on about the quality of these phones. Uh, okay, I have a question here. Uh, mm -hmm. We're now on Twitch. We're here on Twitch. Twitch is basically a website known for uh, hosting video games. So it goes to say that most most of us here and on the audience are uh, video gamers. Uh, there is another big company in China that produces a lot, a lot, lot of shit ton of video games called Tencent. Yep. Yep. Um, should we be worried and should we think the same thing we think about what we about Tencent? What about TikTok? <sighs> I, so, so we banned okay. them as well. No, okay. Well, I, I I'm gonna be careful here because again, I I'm certainly not a I don't I'm not a technologist. I don't understand the technology the uh, you know underlying this kind of stuff, and I'm not a China specialist. But like I said, the bottom line is that anything that has a link to the Chinese government can be used by the Chinese government for its own purposes. Now, I'm not, I'm not on TikTok, I'm not on Twitch, so I can't speak to those particular platforms as to what they do and what they can gather on you. But I just think that people should be should be um, rationally and reasonably skeptical when it comes to using Chinese technology. I, again, I, we, you know, we, we've developed this relationship with China over the past 30 to 40 years, largely because um, they made cheap products and they were cheap both economically and they were pieces of shit. Now they've gotten a little better in certain in certain sectors. And trade with China is in the in the trillions of dollars, right? I mean, we send stuff to them, we send stuff to us, blah, blah, blah. But to me, you have to go back to what is the nature of the, you know, the People's Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party, and what is it that they're trying to achieve? And what they're trying to achieve is not that different than what the Soviets and their allies tried to achieve in the aftermath of Second World War. They want to extend their dominance. They want to extend their influence. And they're not they're not a democracy. They're not the same as we are. They don't have the same the same priorities. They don't have the same way of looking at the world that we do. Just ask Taiwan. Just ask the Uyghurs. Just ask the Tibetans. Just ask Hong Kong. Just ask all the nations in the South Asian Sea. Ask the Thais. Ask the Malaysians. Ask the, ask the Filipinos about Chinese aggression in the South Asian Sea. So, yeah, these guys, they're not on our side. So, so that should let, you know, act, make you ask the question, should you, in fact, be supporting it by going on these platforms and buying Chinese products? I, I try not to buy Chinese products, but you know what? It's next to impossible. It's next to impossible these days to buy a coffee maker or whatever that's not made in China. That's, that's the way we've allowed I think the Chinese economy to dominate our own economies these days. And we're seeing because of COVID what happens when, you know, when, when travel is restricted and shipping is interrupted because of mass pandemics. I just, I mean, I just have read that, you know, Americans have a shortage of baby formula. And what, what the hell is, I mean, what do you mean? You can't make your own baby formula? No, it's probably all made. It's probably all made. I don't know where it's made, but it's not made in the States anymore. 
we, we talked about this exactly last week. That's funny that you bring that. Uh, we had a discussion about Roe v. Wade, uh, and we had yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of, uh, of mothers in in mm -hmm. the uh, the chat, and also Agaton is a healthcare worker, so I think he knows yeah. about that. And yeah, that's funny you bring that same topic two weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is also a short. I don't know if it's the case in Canada, but as I said last week, I have a friend uh, who's a mom, is a mother. She's in Canada. And she, they have a shortage of, of medication, so she's not able to get yeah. medication for her sick children. You know, like the 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 global economy is great. Like I'm not trying to say we should go back to the old system where we didn't trade. Trade is really really important, but the fact that we have basically outsourced a lot of our basic industries to other nations, and when that something goes wrong with those trade links, you're fucked, right? Because you can't you can't produce it in your own backyard anymore. And I'm not saying we should, you know. Every country should have should duplicate the efforts of other of other countries, but you know certain basic necessities like infant formula, like maybe cell phones, things that are really really critical. Like I don't give a I don't, I don't give a rat's ass where you get your potato chips from. Like that's not a, that's not an essential product. You know, if your potato chips are available, Phil, well, Phil, I'm in well, Quebec. No, I'm from Quebec. We have poutine here. If you, if you say poutine is not essential, I, I'm going to fight you on this one. Potato chips, not potatoes, right? No, potato chips. Oh, I got my cheese curds. I'm good. <laughs> but you know, but you have to really ask yourself. I mean, like, so, you know, if China were to invade Taiwan, which is a very real possibility at some point down the road, you know how, what percentage of semiconductor chips Taiwan makes? It's incredibly high for the world. For the world. So if China were to take over Taiwan and basically say a oh, fuck you to the rest of the world because you, you opposed our invasion of which, which of course the Chinese say is really Chinese territory that Taiwan doesn't deserve independence, which is why Taiwan doesn't have a lot of people that recognize it as an independent country because they're afraid of pissing off China. Now all your semiconductors are now being controlled by China. Good luck with that. Yeah. Right. So I had um read something interesting too where so uh asparagus you had asked about all of these other like companies like tiktok and twitch to be banned but it looks like you know it, it wasn't I don't think twitch is a uh, chinese -based. oh sorry did i hear Yet. wrong i heard I, I heard i heard twitch well i'm curious or but i don't that. think it is uh, twitch is owned um, by amazon amazon so, yeah, yeah. Uh, basis. all right um Oh, wait, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Anywho, I uh, ignore my little brain uh, scuttle there. Uh, so it looks like I was reading that these aren't like some of these aren't just baseless claims that had been made towards the company. It looks like they uh, there's a case in 2003 filed by Cisco um, that had been proven where they were, you know, actually giving the information. So I like I'm guess I'm assuming that plays like a huge obviously that plays a huge part into the reason why they, you know, have this ban going on. Um so is it one of those things where we should let it like wait till it happens? Kind of like what you're saying, should we automatically just, you know, stop using these or should we like Well, it, 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 it depends, right? It depends what kind of risk we want to take. But, you know, getting back to this the basic question about Huawei uh, and Canada. So we talked about how all of our partners had already banned them years ago. And this government was taking its sweet time um, replicating and following their lead. Um, and, and I really think this was for two primary reasons. This is just my personal opinion. I can't prove it. One is that we got a shit ton of money invested in China. And we feared that if we banned Huawei, we would lose out. So Canadian investment would go down the tubes. Secondly, and this is a more damning um, accusation against not just this government, but Canadian governments over the decades, Canada and Canadian governments is a terrible user of intelligence. They don't understand it. They Who don't think it's it. Well, yeah, because I saw it firsthand. They don't think it's important. They don't, they don't know how to use it. They reject it when it goes against their, their assumed... Um, their assumptions, things they're going to do anyway. And so, like I said, every CSIS director, Canadian Security Intelligence Service, where I work, has been warning for 25 years that China is actively spying in Canada, is actively interfering in the very large Chinese Canadian community. We had, we had evidence that during the last election, which was back in September of last year, September 20 of 21, that a candidate 
who was running in a largely Chinese um, Canadian riding. Inf China was spreading information against that candidate, so they lost the election. So they're influencing the vote, and that's what China's intelligence is doing. So we, we've known this for decades, and yet successive Canadian governments of whatever political stripe don't seem to want to hear it. So why the Trudeau government all of a sudden did this? Really good question. Because the Trudeau government, from what I gather, and, and full disclosure, I, have, I didn't work for the Trudeau government. I had retired before Trudeau became prime minister. I don't see any reason to believe that they are any better users of intelligence than the previous Harper government, which was conservative. And we saw during the so-called Freedom Convoy in Ottawa back in January that this was this big trucker convoy that paralyzed downtown Ottawa for like, what was it, six weeks or so, or th three weeks. Um, the government had intelligence in advance about what was happening and decided not to use it. Already? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was that's public knowledge. I'm not I'm not I'm not betraying any secrets here. That's public knowledge. Now, this is very very different than um, getting a lot of background noise. Yeah, I can you have a uh, a lot of background noise suddenly. Oh, it's gone now. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say that. Um, where are they going with this? This is very different than the with the Americans and the Brits do. They they have a much more robust intelligence culture, where they really take to heart what their intelligence agencies are telling them. And, and use it and and understand it and and can 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 help it make better decisions we don't have that here in Canada never have and it's what it was a big frustration for a lot of us who worked in the business when I was there uh, before I hand it over to Agaton Zeke here says uh, going in line with what you just said Phil, uh, just said Phil China has been actively causing polarization and misinformation forever probably just like a lot of country have but giving them unfettered access to uh, to everything makes that much easier. Yep, hundred percent. So my dog decided that now was a great time to start drinking out of his water bowl, um, <laughs> and he's a lab, so it's just loud as, as I'll get out. Um, I I do have a question, but first I do want to state it's a little refreshing to know that um, the Canadian government is also kind of dumb. Because the American government oh, don't get is me started. <laughs> so it's good to know that it's not just us. Um, but now that you see that all these these countries that you've mentioned, the um, you know New Zealand, Australia, UK, US, and Canada, that they've all banned this. Do you see this other countries taking hold and possibly banning them as well? Or oh, what a great question. Um, that's a really really good question. Um, oh, I get done look so proud. I'm so <laughs> proud. <laughs> I, I'm going to go on a limb and say yes, and I'll tell you why. Um, I'm going to use a bit of analogy here. So, you know, you probably know that um, a, a lot of countries, especially in Europe, were basically sleeping with the Russians for the past couple of decades, right? They saw Russia as a big ally, Russian oil, Russian gas, the Germans, the French, they all thought Putin was their best buddy, blah, 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 blah. Well, now they're seeing that Putin's an asshole, which we told them a long time ago with his invasion of Ukraine. And a hey, full disclosure, I am actually half Ukrainian on my mother's side. So I have a Ukrainian flag flying in front of my house. Um, oh. Yeah, I don't speak it, but I, my, my, my maternal grandparents emigrated from Ukraine and during the First World War in, to and Canada. I'm going to like you now. <laughs> um, so now everyone's seeing Russia for what they are, right? So Germany wants to ban Russian gas imports. Um, People don't want to talk to Putin anymore. Say the Finns and the Swedes want to join NATO, all, all kinds of stuff. I'm hoping that at least Western countries will will extend the analogy to China and they will maybe consider bans. The problem is, is a lot, a lot of what we call third world countries. Can I can I say third world without getting banned on this? This Can I use that term anymore? I have no idea. I've, I've lost track of whether what are the woke culture terms these days. Anyhow, um, you look at um, African and Asian countries and they are basically up to their necks in, in debt to the Chinese, because the Chinese have been very, very successful at what's called the Belt and Road Initiative, building infrastructure in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, in Sub-Saharan Africa, you name it. And I'm I'm less confident that those countries would, would ban Chinese um, infrastructure or technology because they'd be afraid that, Ch that China would basically call in all those loans yeah. for all this, like the billions and trillions they spent on infrastructure, like ports, and you know sewage facilities and all this kind of stuff <clears throat> so so basically to sum up um i'm cautiously hopeful 
that Western countries will see what China's all about, but I'm less hopeful that the rest of the world will. Because they kind of, uh, in a way, taken hostage by all these. Oh well, yeah, they're they're screwed. They're screwed. Right. I was in. Uh, I went to Africa in the latest years. I went to uh, uh, to South Africa, mm -hmm. and I went to uh, another place that I forgot. And both place uh, there were big, big constructions going on. Yeah. And we asked what's happening. Say, oh, Chinese government gave us a lot of money. We're building this, we're building yep. airports, we're building hospital yep. and everything. And they were all saying, yeah, we're going to have someday we're going to have to pay that back. And we hope they don't ask for the loans back right away. So it seems well, to be... but what is worse than that, you see, like, so I'll give an example of Sri Lanka, where they, they built a major port in Sri Lanka. And I don't know if you've been watching the news lately. Sri Lanka is fucked economically. They basically it's almost on the verge of collapse these days. Basically, um, if Sri Lanka can't pay China for the port, guess who owns the port? Yeah, China. Now, yeah, now China, bank. now China has a port in the Indian Ocean, that they can do whatever the hell it wants with. Maybe they want to you know, use it for commercial vessels. So they Maybe down the road they want to maybe have some military vessels visit that port. So now you've basically given China a complete opening into an ocean where it has no interests. No, it's just like it's like China being an Arctic nation, right? China's really interested in the Arctic Ocean. Look at our map, people. Where's China's border with the Arctic? Well, there ain't any. But they've decided that they that they want to have an interest in that. So, yeah, it's you know if you can't pay the piper, then the piper owns yeah. what he just built for you. Um, we have a question from chat coming on. Uh, I uh, don't don't worry, uh, Ash. Uh, you don't have to apologize. Uh, I I love it so much. If you want to read Zeke's question, that'd be awesome. I have one question of my own that I want to ask just before, because uh, I did some research this afternoon. I was uh, telling you before I did my homework. <laughs> and I watched an interview with uh, Guy Saint Jacques, who was the uh, former yeah. ca Canadian ambassador to China, and uh, the interview was all about possible retaliation. What could they do if they're uh, upset about the banning going on? Mm -hmm. And I want to know your advice on that because I don't know if it's all through. I don't see why he would lie, but I have no knowledge on this. Uh, Guy Saint Jacques said that China is not in a good place to retaliate against Canada now, and we have more, much more leverage than we think we do. Because first of all, uh, they uh, import a lot of barley, corn, and wheat from us, uh, which is something obviously they, they need a lot. Uh, their room to maneuver is very, very short because they're in a bad economic situation due to, first of all, their uh, COVID stance, they, their zero COVID situation, yeah. and the uh, the war that's going on because they decided to side up with the... Uh, With, the, uh, with Russia. And yeah. also, uh, China's main source of electricity apparently is coal. Yeah. And uh, Australia. And well, well they, they used to have all their coal coming from Australia, but Guy Saint Jacques said from the la latest years they have come some kind of dispute with dispute with Australia, and they've been importing more and more and more and more Canadian coal uh, for their country. So, what can they do uh, if not shooting themselves in the foot and saying, "Well, we're going to stop importing your product," but these are things we need to survive. Well, they can they can increase their espionage activities in Canada. They so okay. Um, When I used to work for CISA, so the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, there's there's four major things we used to investigate. It's part of what's called the CSIS Act, which dates back 1984 when, when the service was created out of the old RCMP Security Service. And uh, in Section 2 of the Act, it talks about foreign espionage, foreign interference, uh, terrorism, and subversion. Subversion being the undermining of the democratic state. So China could do uh, foreign espionage, spy on Canada. For, China is also big on foreign interference which basically means what I said earlier, they can start influencing Canadians. Okay. They can start spreading rumors in the community. Um, you know, they can, they can take, they can basically affect our elections. They can do things to affect Canadians' views on China so that Canadians will put pressure on the Chinese government to not do anything against China. They're very good at this, by the way, about, you know, raising these issues so that the average citizen thinks that China is the good, good guy and we're the bad guy. And why is Canada trying to punish China when all China wants to be is, is, is good friends with Canada? Oh, that's, what like, I, that's what I would worry about. Like these people you see on the, on Twitter being super loud about um, Ukraine being the bad guy. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, just believing exactly. that the poor, uh, misinformation, poor Putin is just trying to defend himself yep. by invading other countries. Yeah. You know why Putin's such an asshole, eh? Well, it's because he doesn't realize that his, 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 his name is the same as French fries and gravy and cheese. So he's, he's, he's just realized all this time that he's named after a Quebec dish. And he's really mad at, at the West for doing that. That's just my theory. 
Well, m more Quebec bashing, I see. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was praising Quebec for for. Oh, Poutine. thank you. What well, you because mean? Poutine is like the best thing ever, anyway. Exactly. So. And everyone who exactly. disagree with me, we're gonna have. I was about to say we're gonna have a fight. No, we're gonna have a cook off, and I will make you the best poutine you ever had, and uh, you will see your the errors of your way. Uh, Ash, did you want it? Oh, oh, I think. Are you? Yeah. Sorry, yes. You wanted to I'm go here. ahead with the Zeke's question? Did you have uh, the time to yeah, uh, check it? I can, I can uh, read question it out loud. Question from the chat, Phil. Sure. So it says, with reports of Bell and other telecoms essentially needing to rip out the current infrastructure mm. in order to completely remove Huawei technology from the network, is there a large amount of potential uh, work the Canadian government needs to do to do the same? This applies in general not only to for china technology also what are the thoughts on no rebate for having to rip out this mm. stuff okay um i i guess i am a bit of a nerd i'm a real star trek fan and and again as the older yes. uh, citizen of this particular group i remember the very first star trek okay a uh, captain kirk i was around okay when that was first out not a very good series, by the way. Um, I'm a real Next Generation fan. It was the best one of all, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, Deep I've Space got two Night. thumbs up. Deep Space Nine. Oh, Deep Space I've been trying to watch it. It's a piece of shit. Anyhow. Asparagus, uh, did we just become best friends? <laughs> Deep Space Nine is the best. Okay, let's. Okay, I got to go now, guys. My, uh, my time's run out. Um, but I, 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 want, I want to compare Huawei infrastructure and in answer to this question with with borg remember when picard was invaded by the borg and he had all these tubes running through him yeah and it, was real, it was a bitch to get it out right okay that's probably the analogy for what you'd have to do for the the infrastructure that started it's not impossible to do but because we were asleep with the switch for so long we find ourselves in a situation where a lot of the infrastructure is already there and you're going to have to take time to rip out just like captain picard had to have the borg ripped out of him now, you would create opportunities for other companies, be it Canadian, be it American, be it uh, Ericsson, be it Nokia, whatever, and there'd be a shit ton of money to be made by companies and countries that share our values, i.e. Western democratic values. So that'd be a good thing. Should there be a, was it was the question, a rebate or something about, you know, um, I have no idea. I, I can't answer that part of the question, but, um, and it would take time, but I'd like to think, again, I'm not, I, you know, I, I don't run cables for a living. I like to think that you could do this while the system is still up and running, where you could, you know, t do it simultaneously with, our, with providing services already. So, yeah, it'd be a great idea to rip all this shit out uh, and you basically say to Huawei, you know what, we're not going to use any of your any of your technology anymore. Go go screw yourselves. Uh, why not? And we create jobs as well. Woo okay, that's that's uh, creating job is always interesting. Quick, uh, quick, quick here interaction here. Um, people in chat, thank you so much for being here. We are still going to talk about, uh, we're still here for at least uh, 20 minutes, uh, half an hour. Uh, we are talking tonight about the Canada's latest decision to ban Huawei and Z ZTE's product from its uh, for, from the country. We are at, we having a special guest tonight, Mr. Phil Gursky, who worked in the Canadian intelligence for uh, a long time. Uh, Ever, retired, forever. So, forever. <laughs> uh, CSC and CSIS um, intelligence analyst. And I'm uh, I'm uh, seconded today by a good friend, Agaton, good friend, Ash, that are helping me. And we have a lot of questions for uh, Mr. Gursky. If you guys have questions you want to ask, like Zeke did, make sure to highlight your question in the chat to make sure I see them. And uh, me or Agaton or Ash, Ash, we'll read them for you. Uh, make sure, because yeah, we are, uh, we still have 20 minutes, so make sure if you have a question, shoot them now. Quick question here about removing the Borg implants, because uh, we all see seven of nine never got your <laughs> implants removed anyway, so you can see it's a pain in the ass. Uh, I have some some uh, dates here and data. So, Canadians company now have until June 28, 2024 to get rid of all their 5G's equipment from your wave and ZTE. However, uh, they have until December 2027 to get rid of all their 4G equipments. And maybe this is out of your uh, of your field, but I want to know, is there a difference? Why is it more important to get rid of the 5G equipment quicker and 4G's can wait a little bit? Okay, yeah, I'm going to be careful because like, you know, um... <sighs> Like, like I said, I, I, I do a lot of interviews in Canada when it comes to like intelligence and especially terrorism. I sometimes get requested to talk about cyber and I say very, very politely, 
to the interviewer. I can't spell cyber. I think it starts with an S. So you're asking the wrong guy. Um, but it seems to me that you'd want to rip out the 5G stuff first because that's the faster, more efficient system to which we're all going towards anyway. I mean, who the hell is going to be using 4G in a couple of years time? Right. Everything's 5G. Right. I mean, who, I mean, OK, um, you know, who, who uses the dial up modems? Anybody put their hands up? Dial up modems? Uh, no. We, I have a question, though. I don't even know how you can use 4G instead of 5G. My phone just does it for me. Yeah, well, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, so like, so I, I guess, you know, get, get rid of the most important stuff for, first because that's the one that everyone's migrating towards. And then if there's some threat that's still underlying, then rip out the 4G stuff as well. But I don't know what that entails. Like, you know, are 4G wires green and 5G wires red? Are there, are there even wires? Okay. Is it all fiber? I have no idea. But it seems to me that you'd want to make sure that the, the best system that your country is using for its, you know, for its network is the one you want to protect first. And then you clean up all the other shit later. Uh, Zeke might have an answer here. He says, when he was doing some reading, the reason was 5G is decentralized and harder to control. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. But then he adds, whether that's true or not, I have no idea. So. Well, it's on the internet. It's true, right? Everything on the internet is true. Obviously. Well, we are on the internet, oh, so, so we are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, before I go to uh, uh, one of my last questions here, because I have a lot, uh, Agaton and Ash, you wanted to uh, jump in with something? Not necessarily a question. I just, um, you know, we're talking about all these 5G companies. It's never occurred to me to actually start seeing what the big companies are. And they're, out of the five major ones, two are American, two are Chinese, and one's Finnish. Mm -hmm. And what are they? It's just like uh, Ericsson, Qualcomm, no, no, Nokia, 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 Huawei, ZTE, and Cisco. Yeah, or Cisco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got so you got three Western companies and two Chinese companies. Uh, there's no question really here. I'm just yeah, like it's just why why would we have chosen oh. to bring Huawei in here anyways if we have these companies? They probably cheap. offered it. They probably offered it a much much cheaper rate. They're probably selling it at a loss originally, right? I will, and when we were talking about the made in China, it just is like, yep, made in China, made in China, made in Ch made in Korea. Fucking everything's made in China. Yeah, well, like I said, so, I, growing up as a kid, that was we knew it was the cheap stuff. It, it fell apart right away. Yeah. I just um, looked at the speaker right next to me, and it says <laughs> "Made in China." So, yeah. Agatha, did you did you just point at your collection of autographs? No, no, <laughs> no. I know where those were made, but the frames they're in were probably mm. made in China. So it would still be correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the paper that the pictures were probably printed on were made in China, and the markers that were used to sign them were probably made in China. Stop hurting me. And we have um, we, we have we've done that to ourselves for decades. Well, and it doesn't seem like this is something that's like a new a new problem with Chinese trying to really take a step in with intelligence. So it's just really interesting the fact that we've worked that we've kind of dug this hole for ourselves. Is yeah. there really anyone to blame but ourselves nope. on this? No. Nope. Yeah. And I, again, I really I think COVID has taught a lot of people a very important lesson is that there's certain things that you have to maintain a a secondary or a supplemental ability capability in because if if the shit hits the fan and for whatever reason there's trade embargoes look what Russia's going through in terms of trade embargoes or in sanctions right now there's many things Russia can't buy from the west if Russia can't make them itself or isn't making it them themselves and it, it it can't get it from us it has to go to inferior products from I don't know India China Pakistan, I don't know, I'm not just talking about products in general. You don't think that has an impact on their society? Absolutely. And so I think that as economies, you, you want to make sure that in, in a heartbeat, you know, look, look how quickly we, we manufactured vaccines for COVID. Like that, that is an incredible success story. This is a disease that we couldn't stop dating back to, you know, the winter of 2020, right? And within months, we had working vaccines. Oh, and by the way, the Chinese vaccines are shit compared to Western vaccines when it comes to COVID. We know that. That's a, that's a, that's a medical fact. So if the Chinese, you know, are making shitty vaccines, do you want to have shitty cell phone infrastructure from the Chinese? Ask yourself that question. 
Well, it's also interesting that a lot of people in America are very hesitant to get the vaccine, even though well, that's wait, that's a whole other podcast. That, that is a whole different a whole different thing. Yes. It, 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 I'm on that one, oh. by the way, asparagus. You put me on that one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> me too. So. For it. All right. So I'm going to ask a question based purely on my lack of knowledge of these things. So, understandably, Huawei gets in in our system. They can. They can spy on us. They can spy on everyone in the country because they're just using the phones. Yep. What's to stop them from using a USB drive that's totally made? All of they're all made in China. They're all made somewhere. Putting some sort of program in there that immediately just spies on everyone's computer as you plug it into your computer. Should we be scared of everything that technologically comes from China? Well, okay. You, you don't want to become unnecessarily paranoid, right? But I'm already um, paranoid. This is podcast <laughs> turned me this way. Um, I, I would say in theory that there is always a chance of that happening. But let, let me give you an analogy here. So, you know, when I used to work in, in, in signals intelligence, um, so SIGINT, so for, for you guys, it's like your NSA, National Security Agency. You're more familiar with that. Um, and even when I worked for CSIS, people would say, you know, you're spying on me. And I would say, you know, you're right. We spied on you for 15 minutes. You are so fucking boring that we stopped spying on you because you're a useless twat and we didn't learn anything of use from you. So we, you know, so I think the vast majority of us with all this data that we're, that's being collected, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. You know, it, it just, it's, it's just garbage. It's just, it's fluff. It doesn't mean, make any difference. You know, if you, if you're intercepting the, a, you know, a, a private conversation between the U S president and Canadian prime minister that's meant for their ears only, that's important. But what we're doing here tonight, if it's being monitored, copied, collected, who gives a rat's ass? It just isn't, it isn't important enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can be suspicious of any technology, I suppose. But then again, you know, look, look at look at the technology we're using to have this particular conversation, right? It could go south nine, you know, nine hundred different ways, but we're still using it because we have to. This is this is twenty twenty two. We just become so reliant on it. That everything we do is 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 technological based. It's it's how we search for information. It's how we communicate. I was in the UK a couple of weeks ago. You know, you know, um, chatting with my wife over the over over the internet. Could have been intercepted. Yeah, probably. But big whoopee deal, right? I'm still going to talk to my wife. Doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I didn't really answer your question, and I apologize. But in theory, the answer is yes. But. Most yes, they could, are, are but no one in, wants to know about no, all the memes. Nah, I about. Nobody is that important, really. <laughs> no. no one really gives a shit about what we think or do. We're Sorry just, to, to we're deflate just, Regal. We're just sheep. Nah. <laughs> we're just part of the sheep. We don't have any real like ho- like hold on this comp- on this like government's like yeah. infrastructure. So I, I don't think so. Nah, I don't either. I mean, there's people that you that w- won't use any technology because they really have this primordial fear that everything they're, they're doing and saying is being monitored you know um yeah whatever well i mean and, and you can date it oh not date it but you can also correlate with people who don't want to give dna to companies like 23 and me yeah. for um yeah. practically the exact same reason which i'm just sitting here like okay so i just don't have to do anything illegal <laughs> yeah where my dna is there like well then that's that slippery slope argument right i mean i mean you know, is it should the, should the state have the right to have information on you in the you know, uh, I'll use a you know a, a good Canadian French uh, expression okazu. You know, in in the case that one day you know you do something stupid and they, they oh by the way you know just Phil in case. From, that's why yeah it's okazu yeah if, just in case. You, got it you know, thank if, you yeah <laughs> Phil is uh, you know we have his his record and by the way he just stole a car or something or just murdered somebody whatever kind of thing yeah I mean and and, and there certainly are people that are extremely jealous and extremely protective of all their information and, and that's your right right mm-hmm. but again at the end of the day nobody really cares <laughs> they really don't <laughs> uh first time uh chatter here for being here for the first time on channel Unger strike thank you so much for being here Unger strike says phil just summed up my time with public safety uh 
tell us more if you want to tell us more about your time in public safety i'm uh, i'll be curious if you can if you want to and by the way thanks for watching us tonight i uh, hope you like the channel feel free to follow and subscribe i have one question for fee here this might be a bit uh, more of your wheelhouse it's all about radicalization and uh, mm, violence my favorite <laughs> favorite <laughs> um we've talked about 5g and you've i know you know because we i've edited some of your podcasts about this uh, some conspiracy theorists believe that uh, 5G uh, is a dangerous product that could, I don't know, like make you magnetic. I don't know what it is today because it's always <laughs> weird and change. Maybe turn you into a Borg or I know where it is right now. But some people think that 5G is bad for you. Uh, do you think that banning a 5 Canada deciding to ban and USA and UK deciding to ban a company that produces mass produces 5G uh, produce will bolster them these people and somehow give them some uh, so, so some that they will believe they're more right about what their, their their beliefs and could radicalize them a bit further okay I, I'm just gonna ask Bill Gates who's beside me right now um, <laughs> I, I, I asked Bill everything because Bill knows everything about me right and and, and, and and Bill Gates runs the world Bill and what Phil you, Bill um, what do you think about that no um, look at <laughs> um, I find conspiracy theories really, really interesting um, yeah. because most of them are really, really stupid yeah. and, and they, they, make, they make no sense whatsoever. The problem with conspiracy theories, and this is, this, this, you, talk, you talk about radicalization. So this is this radicalization, which is a term I really, I've come to hate, even though I used it for like 15 years because it means so many things, so many people. Um, the problem with conspiracy theories is that you can definitively prove to the, to the nth degree that what they believe in is complete bullshit. And their immediate response is, but you would say that because you're part of the conspiracy. <laughs> so it it's really, really hard to get people who buy into this stuff to stop believing in it. It becomes part of their whole universe kind of thing, right? So there's no question that um, this is gonna happen. I mean, I, 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 I really like analogies in this case. So one conspiracy theory that is still apparently very, very, strong and, and part of it's due to a guy called alex jones i'm sure my two american friends are familiar with him oh, um fuck. yeah <laughs> oh, the, here uh, we go case, the sandy hook killings right back in 2016 oh, what is it or something like that where that kid walked into school and killed all those kids in kindergarten there is still a conspiracy theory that that was actually a government operation now we all know that you'd have to have like two brain cells to believe that kind of thing but it's still a very, very strong belief. Just like, you know, um, was it that pizza parlor, Comet Ping Pong in, in, in Washington was actually a Hillary Clinton sex, uh, child sex ring. That's why that guy went in and tried, you know, to rescue the children from the basement kind of thing, right? So the problem is with these conspiracy theorists is that it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, they're gonna find some other way to explain things. So I, I don't know that it matters what you do. Whether you ban Huawei, or you don't ban Huawei, you take it out of 5G, you don't take it 5G, they're going to twist it in, certain, in a certain way to fit their own paradigm of how the world works. Now, this, there's a good, there's a good, there's a silver line in this cloud, though. Oh. In that 99.99% of the conspiracy, conspiracy theorists are useless wankers on the internet. It's the 0 .001, like the guy that goes into Buffalo and shoots up a neighborhood that are the ones you worry about. And that's where your security services and your law enforcement get involved to try to pick out the one in a million who's going to go from consuming conspiracy theories online to getting get, getting a gun, driving most of 200 miles to Buffalo and shooting up all those, those people, right? And that's a whole other issue about predictive. You can't predict who these people are, unfortunately. There's no model. There's no algorithm to predict these people. But the bottom line is that at, you know the vast majority never do a damn thing because they're cowards or they're incompetent. Or they're not really, really into the theory, you know, in such a way that it kind of runs their lives. But yeah, in terms of conspiracy theories, I don't have any advice to anyone listening or to us watching us today, but what to do about it, because you know it is what it is, and and they just have this belief system, and it doesn't matter how many times. I mean, um, you had a whole president, you had a president for four years that basically was a conspiracy theorist, and and he would you know deny simple facts. You know, the sky is blue. No, the sky is not blue. It's actually black. No, no, sir. Look up. Well, that's not the sky. That's that's some kind of a, 
veneer that's you know the democrats are using to show this guy is but it's a great 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 guy (laughs) you know so yeah i mean yeah the the people that'll use this whole thing to to it'll feed into their theories but again what are you gonna do about it and and, you know one in a one in a bazillion will go off the rails and do something violent and hopefully you're not too worried about this well no i'm not but you know but stories like buffalo they're tragic stories getting a lot of press not just in, in your country but in my country as well and people extrapolating, saying this is, you know, a big, big threat. No, it's not. It's it's sad. It's tragic what happened. I wish they could have got the guy in, in time. He actually was streaming it or he was online. It was a half hour before he started shooting. And no one decided to call anybody and say, I think this guy is, you know, going to do something stupid. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's a whole other conversation. Why people don't do that kind of thing. But this isn't happening every day. And it probably won't happen every day. I, I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict the future. Yeah. But. You know, I just don't think that we need to worry so, so much about conspiracy theorists all becoming violent on the same day kind of thing. They're, they're, they're amusing, I think, at the best of times. Some a, of the stupid shit they believe in. An episode of conspiracy, a conspiracy theory will amuse me uh, a lot, and I would love to do that. Uh, before we go to closing statements, we still have a few minutes. Uh, Agaton and Ash, you have any last questions we can go? Uh, we can make it like two or three minutes by question. That'd be great. And then we can go to closing statements. I do, but it's completely not. It, it It's just, Phil, I need to know, are there any conspiracy theories you do believe in? No. Oh. Okay. No. Well, because to him, it's not a conspiracy theory then. Because <laughs> he knows. I'm okay, fair. okay. I, well, there, there's lots of things that I could say, but then I'd have to kill you because I told you. So um, call it a conspiracy theory, but it is what it is. Well, you I know, mean, I'm part of the generation that has a death wish. Let's go. Um, I'm ready. You know, I mean, there certainly are conspiracy theories that have a small element of truth to them, an actual fact, but then it goes off to the nth degree, right? Where it goes on, it's like these concentric circles, and it just keeps expanding and expanding, and it just gets really, really like you know, really like into nut job territory. So maybe there's a kernel of truth there, but no, I, I, I just find conspiracy theories just really, really amusing. I got some of my own. I, I believe well, in, but yeah, you know. we have a good one about the Sonic that I agree with you. Oh, right? that's I. It's <laughs> it's not it's not a conspiracy theory. That this is one is fact. true. I I that back you hundred percent on this one. We need to have like a whole Sonic the Hedgehog like <laughs> just like yeah. this. I yes. you and I need to stream this. We need to get the word out. Yes, people need if to know. Anyone. They've been <laughs> well, manipulated I... by the the studio who made Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I agree. Okay. I can't spell Sonic the Hedgehog, so I will be part of that one, okay? <laughs> I, th- I think I might just need to either sit there and just stare at you guys like this the entire time or just watch it. I no, will no, get you're going to be baffled and you're going to come out saying, oh, why I didn't think of that before. Well, it, I've, I've been thinking about it since the movie came out. Since, like, everything started happening with it. I'm sitting here like, Are Don't you spoil guys? it. Don't spoil it. We're gonna, oh. I think we're going to make an episode on this. I, we I need think, to make I an episode of Sonic the Hedgehog because I <laughs> will – I'll probably take over and – Okay, don't invite me to that episode. <laughs> well, at least watch it. It's such a great episode. <laughs> it, it's going to be top hitting. I, I promise. Uh, Agaton, uh, any last question? Uh, I guess I guess yeah, just – Comment for uh, Super interested to know if there is any batshit thing from your entirety that you've worked for that you could tell us that's just insane. Oh. Like a crazy Ooh. story. Um. Oh, there's one I'd love to tell, but I can't. Uh, ah, that's so teasing. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I know. You can't say I know. that. Jeez. We, 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 okay, I'll try, I'll try to phrase in such a way that I don't get arrested tomorrow. Um. There was something we were working on once where um, we had a hard time figuring out what this party was was doing. And then because we, we, we were able to intercept um, a, a conversation and just as we were giving up hope, the person we were listening to told us exactly what we wanted to know, which led to an incredible success in terms of finding something that we were looking for. And it was like it was like this like a moment. You don't get them very often when you work in this, this, the business is like, holy fuck, this was the key. This was the golden key. And as a consequence, we made, we made it like bandits in terms of what we're trying to achieve. 
it was so cool. It's, it's just really, really cool. I, I, I wish I could give you more details, but I really, really can't. But just to say that when that happens, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, when you watch, um, I don't know if you guys watch like, you know, police dramas or whatever on my wife and I are big on a uh, sort of British, British cop shows. We love them. And it's like that one, that one clue or that one piece of information within us like that unlocks everything that happened to me on a couple of occasions in my life. It's like, wow, this, this is why I come to work. This is what makes the difference kind of thing. Yeah. I'm slightly jealous. That sounds like so much. That just sounds so cool. As someone who I wanted, who always thought it'd be really cool to go into, uh, especially for me with not, like, not what you did, but, mm. like, just, like, criminal, what, what yeah. is it? Um, uh, What's the correct term for it? The people oh, like, who, like NCI? Uh, similar, but more so, um, I... Uh, the reason why criminals do things, the criminal oh, profiler, like, like, profiler. Yeah, Pro, like behavior, profiler, behavior, like yeah, behavioral profiler. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, I'm a oh. very big avid watcher of like NCIS. Yeah. So you like well, GCS, the channel when they just uh, interrogate a uh, criminal and just you see them trying to yeah, break yeah. their defenses. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Eh? I, I can honestly tell you, um, and I, I don't want to make you feel bad, but I can honestly tell you that for 32 years, I had a job that I couldn't wait to get to work in the morning. Because every day was different and every day was cool. Yeah, I was pretty. I was. I was, I was, I was one lucky Canadian. Put it that way. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough to where I, I like what I do, uh, and I'm actually going to school to really improve what I do. Um, but on the other hand, if I could do everything over, if I could just like do something that I never thought I would be able to do, it'd be like criminal profiling and that right. kind of stuff. Because that would just. It, it's cool. I'm not sure. I, I think it's different than what you see on NCIS and the programs, but it's still really cool to be able to piece that kind of stuff together. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, we are going to jump into closing statements now. It's been an hour and a half. That was awesome. Already? Was incredible. Already. Yes. Well, let's Holy just say shit. I cheated. One hour and 20 minutes because we had a little bit of uh, audio issues. A little bit, of, yeah, technical um, difficulties. Phil. Someone's dog was drink, drinking too loudly or something. I don't know. I was, apparently, that wasn't what it was, so I don't know what the sound was. I, I thought you, when you said that, I was like, does his dog have an automated like waterfall that comes nope, up when he's That's like, all I can hear. Is like, your dog vacuum, just... vacuuming the uh, yeah, living room, really? maybe? There was literally nothing going on. There must have just been mm. some interference. Now we need the do 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 do. Well, it was, it was Huawei 5G interfering. It was. They're listening in. Was. They were listening to our. <laughs> Show, trying to to <laughs> shut you up. Yep. If you get if you get a USB thumb drive in the mail, don't put yep. it in. Or if you get if you if you, if you find your dog well, nailed to the door tomorrow, that's, that would be how they get back at you. I'm oh, sorry, I just wow. that's off. That's awful. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did a joke. You did a dark joke. <laughs> yeah, Phil goes dark sometimes. <laughs> uh, that being said, Phil, thank you so much for being here. That was incredible. I had a Thanks. blast. I hope you fun. did. Uh, I did. It's fine. I would love to uh, invite you again if you Let's want to. Let's do it to. again, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you guys, I've well, worked with Phil for like, what, five years? Yep. Uh, I've yep. been editing his podcast, his YouTube videos, taking care of his websites. I will put links in everything in the chat, guys. If you want to uh, see more of Phil, he has a YouTube channel called Canadian Intelligence. Say, Oh, I will let you sh shout this out, Phil. Don't worry about it. Yep. I will put a <laughs> link in the chat. I will give you all like two or three minutes to shout yourself out. But just wanted to say... Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you for five years, Phil, and Thank I'm you. so glad that you uh, you were uh, kind enough to come on my show. Uh, oh, now that, oh uh, it's my pleasure. And I, I couldn't have done what I did without you in terms of the website. Remember, I can't spell cyber, right? I think it starts with an S. So the fact that the website was as good as it was is all is all thanks to you. Thank you. Now I'm getting red. <laughs> I'm as good as Agaton to take compliments. So, uh, speaking of Agatons, uh, you want to tell uh, the audience who you are, where they can find you, what you're doing, and who the fuck you are? Why are you here tonight? Why am I here? I don't know. You asked me to be here. <laughs> but you said hey, yes. Let's have, let's have some dumb idiot on the show. <laughs> no, that um, was my job. Fine. Shit, I don't even get that. What? Is, I don't even know what my role is anymore now. Yeah, because you uh, didn't even do your intro. Oh, man. All right. It's true. You I had did one job. You had one job. Too busy working. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm okay. Agathon. Well, you're working in healthcare. So uh, yeah. thank you so much for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, I'm a nursing student. Uh, just finished my semester, so I plan on gaming a lot and streaming some more this summer in midst of going camping and all things outdoors. Um, yeah, so Agathon89, you can follow me on my page at that handle. And knowing Asparagus, he'll probably throw out the shout out on there because he's really good about that. I mean, I could too. I'm a mod. But um, yeah, uh, I play a lot of horror games, but I just love talking with people. So most of what I do is just playing games with other people or doing events like this with other people. And I enjoy it. So yeah, that's me. That's me. I really gotta like write some shit down, like script it like you do, so I don't sound like an idiot every time I open my mouth. I don't script anything. I just I'm just very good at repeating the same shit you're over and over really, and over you're again. Really good so. at things. I get it. <laughs> get it, asparagus. You're better at everything. Thank you. It took you a while. It took you long enough, Agaton. Um, oh, I admit it's that first day. <laughs> oh, Ash is taking notes for the fanfic. That's what you're doing, right? I saw you yeah, taking your you phone know? up. <laughs> Because I totally uh, didn't make it obvious. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? <laughs> is it that is what you your have? turn. Does and people are, are just realizing that your bag, bag rub is I, fake now. I saw that. It made me laugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I wish my like apartment could look as nice as this. So I think, you know, I might have to find where wherever this backdrop is and go live in it. Oh, come it's, to Canada. It's, it's cheaper. It's like class. <laughs> I... I, I would love to move out of the States. Uh, we'll see. Um, well, I also want to go back to school. So. <sighs> Tough choices. You know, so many choices. Uh, well, I have a hundred names. Um, Ash, Taylor, Jade. Uh, call me what, what, you, what you must. Uh, I don't have social I don't have anything to promote, so I will promote Asparagus for being such a lovely host as much as I uh, uh, give him shade all the time. Um, drop a follow. Drop a subscription. I'll be here. I think we, I think it's this Wednesday I'll be on the uh, Republic Rants. Possibly Wednesdays. The guys did not come back to me yet, but uh, on, on Saturday at least. Uh, oh, you yeah. wanted her on there? Ew. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> On Saturday, uh, if you liked uh, Ash, we're going to play Pico Park, which is a co-op co games of eight people where we absolutely have to work as a team and people like to troll and uh, to make us fail. So there's probably going to be a lot of raging, a lot of screaming, a lot of failing. So Ash is going to be there, part of the crew. I'm going to make it known right now. I'm not going to like purposely try and do things to sabotage. It's then just you're doing it that wrong. way. <laughs> well, you know, it's just going to seem that way. I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes. I don't play video games. That, that's the whole point. The point is to see who's going to rage and scream first. So there you go. You got it. It's going to be you. <laughs> Agaton, really? Thanks for this gift of subs, buddy. What? 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 You not mean to gift subs? What? <laughs> Agaton, thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, I know. Phil, who are you? Where can people find you if they like what they... Well, not if. Because they liked what they did uh. tonight. <laughs> So you can go, you can find me uh, on my website, borealisthreatandrisk.com. Borealis as in the Northern Lights, because I am a proud Canadian. That's where you'll find all the podcasts, all the blogs. Again, the website is thanks to Asparagus, who built it for me. Uh, find me on Twitter at Borealis Saves, also on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Um, and you will also find a link to my latest book. It's self-published. It's called The Peaceable Kingdom, A History of Terrorism in Canada from Confederation of the Present. It is the best book ever written because I wrote it. Uh, it's, my, it's, actually, it's actually my sixth book, but it's the only one that I've... So I wrote six books in six years after I retired um, from um, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service in 2015. So if you're interested in terrorism, especially from a Western perspective, I've written extensively on terrorism, which was not the topic for tonight, but still something I spent an awful lot of time working on and now thinking about. And uh, yeah, no, it's been a thanks for inviting me. It was a, it was a it was a riot. I really like really enjoyed the format. I enjoyed um, it just talking about this, even though, as I said, it's, China is not my specialization and I'm not a technical guy. But I think it was really cool, to, I think, to ask these questions. Because I think the average person needs to know a lot more about them. And I think we have to educate ourselves on what is out there and, and, and what the possible challenges are. 
So no, thanks again for the invitation. And I would be back in a heartbeat if we can figure out a topic that would be that I could talk semi-intelligently about. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to also um, mention further Agathon's comment. I am a real bad schlock horror movie fan. I've been since I was a kid. I grew up in the 60s watching um, really old Dracula films and Frankenstein on Saturday afternoons. It was what I, what I did. And I'm currently watching a 1972 film with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee called Horror Express. It is bad, but as far as I'm concerned, the worse the better. Exactly. So like it, these are really the the, the 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 acting is the shits, the, the props are the shits, the special effects are the shits, the dialogue's the shits, and that's what I read, or watch rather. And my wife just laughs at me and says, "You're I'm not watching that with you. You can go in the basement and watch these shitty films because I, I'm that's beneath me." But anyhow, so I'm so after this, I'm gonna go finish watching Horror Express and see what happens to the two million year old um, Frozen hominid that's killing people on a train i can't wait that's awesome uh, let me know Ash, how, how yeah. it is well i just want to add one more between this bromance that's starting to foster in here um <laughs> ash take notes uh, phil is a huge lord of the ring fan and now i oh, know yeah. agaton's eyes will just pop right wide open so you guys big, just uh, big, found big a lot time. of a lot of points to get <laughs> oh look at him what, what are you picking up Ooh. Is it Lambas? It's my dice bag. Oh, <laughs> that was uh, elf bread. The lonely oh, mountain. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I see. Likes... Okay, Ash is gone. <laughs> Taking notes for the <laughs> uh, Phil, last comment here. Uh, Unger Strike apparently seems to know you because Unger Strike says, of course, that we don't know the real name. They said, Phil, we talked about Battlestar Galactica a few years ago. Did you get to it? Oh, I remember that. Uh, no, but I but I hope to because, as I said, I tried to watch Deep Space Nine and I gagged after six episodes. So um, I, I'm either gonna watch like Roman's you know, broken. I know. <laughs> I'm either gonna watch like Next Generation for the 47th time, or I'm gonna find something else. So I I will I will de definitely get. Cause I remember that when it came out. So yes, I, I definitely want to watch it. Uh, save yourself the time. You don't need to waste your time watching Star Trek Picard season two. It is uh, very, very bad and will ruin oh, everything. Really? Like. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's too bad. Okay, well, I'm not, I won't pay for that because I'm cheap. I'm a cheap prick, so I won't pay for it. So <laughs> unless it's free, I'm going to watch it anyway. If you want to see Picard ruined, uh, that's the way to do it. Okay, that thank you. Said, guys, thank you so much for being here. This has been an incredible episode. Uh, thank yeah, you to my three panelists. You. Thank you to everyone in chat. I am trying really hard to bring this format uh, at least at least once a week, maybe twice a week now. Uh, I've having so much ideas on topic now that we don't talk about video games anymore, but we talk about <laughs> real stuff, real life issues. Uh, it's harder to find people to want to come and talk about this because it's easier on Twitch to get some people to talk about video games. But if you guys want to be part of the show or you have any idea, join my Discord. You get the link right here. Click that thing. Join my Discord. We're looking for more participants for this show. We want to do this at least once, maybe twice a week. And this is going to be awesome. My name is Aspargus Dakery. You can know me as a uh, social deduction games. I like to play Project Winter, the game when you have to lie around, you have to deceive people, you have to backstab your friends. I need to get Phil to play uh, Project Winter with us because I think it's going to be good at finding out who's lying to us. I know you don't want to play games. I've been trying for years to get you to play fucking games. I know. I know. I've been. It, it didn't work. But sorry, my my audio. I can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh -huh.